Speak your game. TV. You ever lost it all? Ever lost it all? So how'd you get it back? How'd you get it back? Ever lost it all? Ever lost it all? How'd you get it back? How'd you get it back? Ever lost it all? Ever lost it all? So how'd you get it back? How'd you get it back? It's your boy DJ Fisher from White House Vision. Shout out to Spitchy Gang TV. We're live right now in the interview with your boy DJ Official. So DJ Official, how'd you get that name? I got that name. Actually, my name was passed down from my cousin, from my cousin Ellie. Uh, we started back like OHM, Official It's Movement. Um, after we ended up stopping that whole movement, we ended up like splitting and everybody started doing their own thing. like. Some people went to school, went to college to go finish shit, you know what I'm saying? And my cousin basically passed down the name to me, and I've been holding it ever since. So, basically, yeah, that's how I really got my name, is from my cousin. Okay, so you was never like a DJ? I actually, that's how I started. I used to, I learned from him too. I used to DJ house parties, a lot of house parties. And that's how I really had my name buzzing. Then I ended up getting in, more into the music of making it. As in like recording it, all that, chopping it up. I started getting more into music and then I kind of like put the DJ to the side. But then I kind of just like started back up again and like morphing all my talent together now, pretty much. So what made you want to start getting more into making music? Just the feel of it. Like, just seeing, I don't know, it just makes me feel better. It's like expressing myself. Just like I was DJing, that was more of my turn up days when I used to like drink a lot and all that. But now it's just like more of me, it, like more of it being a stress reliever for me. Like my place, of, my place of peace. You know what I'm saying? Like I just ever since I was a kid. Like when I first got the Get Rich or Die Trying album, when I was younger, that's when I really wanted to fucking do music. I'm not even gonna hold you. So is that one of your favorite rappers, 50? Yeah. 50, one of my favorite rappers. I'm not gonna hold you. I was watching a um, documentary with you like a little while ago. Um, it was Sorry for the Hooks. He was doing like a documentary for it. Yeah. Yeah, and they were saying how you was real good with the hooks. How'd you, how'd you end up good with the hooks? I honestly started, I was, I was in the building with a lot of different artists. Like I used to go to studios with different artists and shit. And I never really used to do music. I used to just observe and observe how everybody do they do their own thing. And I just kind of started doing it on my own, like by myself, not telling nobody. Then one day, I just didn't care. I just wanted to keep, to keep on pursuing and pursuing it. And the people around me kept pushing me, saying that, yo, you could do better, you know what I'm saying? So I just kept pushing myself. I took criticism to the full extent, even if it was good or bad, you know what I'm saying? Like, even if it's bad, I go, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here and whine about it. I'm just going to go and go, go fuck shit up. That's it. So who are some of those people that really pushed you to do better? The first nigga who really pushed me is my nigga Luke Wolf. That's my brother. That's my brother. He really, it, it was really him because we continued after the Fish and It's movement. Like, he really, he really pushed me into doing a lot more things, and then I started, like, expanding, you know what I'm saying? Started finding myself aware, you know what I'm saying, where my sound is and what I could do, you know what I'm saying? Touching whatever I can, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be like a rapper. I'm trying to be an artist where I can hit any kind of beat that I want or any kind of genre. Like, he really pushed me into doing that shit. Okay, so you say he pushed you, like, how? Writing or? Writing and just, I, honestly, I don't even write no more at the moment. Like, I just go off my emotions, what I feel. Like, that's just, that's what music really comes from. You really don't need to write your music. If you feel what you feel, you don't really need to write it down. So you just do it I off I think the, that's, that's the best kind of music. You just go off the top of your head when you get inside the booth? Pretty much. I just fucking... Smoke my L's and I just listen to the beat over and over until something comes to me. Okay. And how long you been doing music for? I've been doing music since like 09. 
I wanna go. I wanna go far as possible. I wanna go far as possible. I wanna make it to the point where my mom has a house. Even though I'm not with my son's mother, she has a house and my son has a house. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just that's just pretty much my goal. Cause I I, I feel my talent can go somewhere. Hmm. A lot of people may not believe in me, but that shit don't even bother me. Cause I believe in myself more than anybody believe in me. But the encouragement from other people and hearing everybody's opinion about my work really boosts me up more and makes me want to learn more. It makes me want to just do more and give more. And I just want to give back after. Mm. So when you say give back, like how? I want to give back to the community, my community, you know, build a playground or something, you know what I'm saying, for the kids, after school program. You know, it's 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 more for our future. Okay. So you got White House Vision. How did you come up with that? Um, actually it was me, my boy Ace, who recently just came home from doing five years, and his brother A. G. Once he came home, we sat and discussed about like, you know, getting shit legit, getting shit copywritten and all that shit for the name. And basically, that's we sat down, we discussed it, and then we came up with White House Vision. Like it's more of it's it's not it's an entertainment group, but to me, it's more than just music and all that shit. It's more of people I grew up with in the neighborhood that are trying to make a change in their life, and I'm there 100 percent to try and keep them out of trouble. You know what I'm saying. That's just always been the kind of person I was. So how'd you come up with the, the name though? Like why why the White name, House? Yeah, Vision? we sat we sat down for a grip, honestly. In the group just trying to like put words together. And then we ended up getting white and then like White House and then we put White House Vision all together. Okay. Like it wasn't like it was more of because of a block that were from uh, people are from buyers. If you know where the White House is, everybody knows where the White House is. Yeah. That's where niggas. That's where niggas used to trap out of. You know what I'm saying? Like, not me personally, but niggas I grew up with. You know what I'm saying? The niggas I grew up with never liked me in the streets, so they always pushed me to do something better. But now I'm trying to give back to them for doing that shit for me. Okay, so the name kind of came. The name came more because of a, a black thing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's more of a family. So you um you recently did a party. It was called Lean On Me. It was a show. How was that like? The Lean On Me party. That is my people from New West Haven. J.I. Watson and Prince City 203. F and Rich, you know what I'm saying? Them are the people that you want to be in contact with. Because this is my second my, my second party I did that I performed that and it was a success. It was turd. It's a private event, you know what I'm saying? We we're we're planning on doing part three in mass. We're just looking for a venue where it could be a private event, and you know what I'm saying? Like this shit's lit, I'm telling you. It, it's just bringing a whole bunch of artists from different cities, even like New York, CT, all different parts of CT, some from Springfield, you know what I'm saying? Philly, Florida, all that shit. It's just more of a tour that we're trying to... It's like a pre-tour. Okay. A pre-tour to a tour that's going to actually happen. And it's just giving me the little feel for it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's giving the artist that's going to be on the main tour. Because they're planning on doing a Lean On Me tour. These are just the parties that we're just building up. You know what I'm saying? The fans, you know, interacting with everybody. So, when the tour actually comes, you know what I'm saying? Shit's going to be really fucking lit. There'll be merchandise. And all the artists you really fuck with from Springfield will be there. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get anybody from Springfield to be a part of this shit. Alright, so when I have... The Lean On Me party out here, I just want to see the talent that I have in Springfield and see who could we bring with us. Because it's the tour that 
the F and Rich Records are putting together. Okay, who's on F and Rich Records? It's going to be uh, it's J.I. Watson and Prince City 203, and they have a whole bunch of other artists under them as well. But I can't really name all of them. But they're all, they're, I've, I've, been, I've been knowing J.I. since like 2014. I don't know, since like the beginning, the end of 2013 till now. So we've always kept in contact. Since the first day we met, it was just like, cool. I was, shoot, I was shooting a video, and he was actually acting in the video. Okay. What and video was that? It was a Drew Pop video. Actually, Cook Boy Drew Pop. It uh, was with Drew Pop and Stephen A. It should, it should, it should be on YouTube. I think it was, it was crap something. I don't know. It was, it was a while ago. But I know it's on my YouTube somewhere. Okay. All you gotta do is type in Stephen A. and Drew Pop. So now you shoot videos for other artists. I used to. I, I'm pretty, I pretty much do everything. But that's just started getting too hectic for me. Like doing everything, like doing the videos from mixing down the songs to doing the mixtape covers, like doing all that. So I've been trying to find individuals who are willing to like just build, you know what I'm saying? And just like work with the vision, you know what I'm saying? If you see the vision, we are, we all going with. Okay, so you're looking for artists to sign? Pretty much, uh, more of the younger, more of the younger crowd. Okay. And just any probably any artist is that's that's just really talented. I just look, but I haven't chosen anybody like recently. <laughs> How can people get in contact you? If they want to be part of the label. They can contact me on Facebook. Um, my my main Facebook is Salvador Perez, but if y'all want to go to the White House Vision page on Facebook, um, you can follow me on Instagram at DJ Official Four One Three. Same with the Twitter. And same with the um, Snapchat, all that, all DJ official four one three. Who would you say is like the dopest rapper part of your group? The dopest rapper I have to say is Ace. He he did five years. I don't know what five. I, I don't. I, I can't personally say how it feels to be in five years of prison and shit, but. When he came home, he came home. He, he came home with with something to say. Like, and ever since we fucking linked, this nigga's just been, been. He speak the real. He speak the real. I know this personally, cause I grew up. With him. He speak nothing but the real. You know, none of that fake shit. So, I gotta say he's one. Of, he's one of the hottest artists. Okay. Who would be your top five of like all time? Like local wise or industry? Like just anybody. It could be local, it could be industry. Well, I fuck with Belly. A lot of people don't know who Belly is, but that's one of my that's my number one. He's one of my favorite rappers. He actually signed with EXO. If y'all didn't know, he did a song with The Weeknd. That's recently out. Uh, that's one of my, he's my first. I really don't have any other favorites. I just like fuck with, fuck around with other artists, like listening, but I fuck with Black Youngster. That nigga's fucking, fucking retarded. And then YFN, Lucci. Like I, I listen to a lot of Down South artists. Okay. Like, I don't know. I think just Down South is just like so united. Like, they work as a group, and it's just like that's why they win it. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't do that shit at East Coast because everybody's trying to claim they're better than the next nigga and next nigga instead of working together. Right. You know what I'm saying, like, but I listen to a lot of down south. I listen to a lot of down south, but for East Coast, I listen to Joyner Lucas, like. I don't know if y'all if y'all don't see it, but that nigga should be an inspiration to anybody who live in Western Mass. Like he, this nigga got on BT nigga and still just put it on about words that he gonna be on tour with Hobson. So now is he from like, from Western Mass? No, he's actually from if I'm not mistaken, in Rochester or Wor or Worcester. But he's from Western Mass. I know he's in the Western Mass area, and I know exactly where. But. 
He's from the Western Mass area. He's oh. definitely an inspiration, especially on his storytelling. So now you got a new mixtape out, right? Yeah. Um, sorry for the hooks. Yeah. How'd you come up with that? Um, I basically went through like a whole bunch of beats and just wrote hooks and probably like three songs where I put like verses on them. But yeah, it was just more of the concept of me doing all the hooks and shit and all local artists that I chose to kill it and shit. It was a pretty well put tape. Oh bullshit. Man, who was on that tape? Um, I had Shug, I had Delta, I had Kato, I had KT, A Star, Spit Flames, Golden Childs. Um, it's been a little bit, but yeah, yeah, y'all can go see, y'all can see it on SoundCloud. Now I seen it um. A video with y'all, um, you had to join my city. Yeah. How'd y'all come up with that concept? Um, we basically, I didn't really come up with the concept. I was just there to just do my thing. But the concept was basically put together by like Kato and um, Spit Flames. Oh, man. So I was just going with them, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so they came up with the concept, but you wrote your own, yeah. your own part? Yeah. All right. So my boy, the my city John is just, you know what I'm saying. I had, I had Kato on it. I had Luke. I had KT on it. You know what I'm saying. It was just, that was the vicious track. Mm. I'm not even gonna say it was. It was really vicious. What would you say is your hottest track out that you got right now? Uh, I haven't really dropped anything lately because I'm working on a tape myself. But a lot of people gave me good feedback on my, the song My Son. What's that about? Um, it, it's basically about a situation that happened, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to get into that part, but... Okay. You know what I'm saying? But it was, it was just a little situation that happened, but ever since then, like, things got better and shit. You know what I'm saying? For all the dads out there, keep fighting for your kids. You know what I'm saying? Don't be no deadbeat. Okay, so you got a um, son. How old is your son? Um, he's about to be one. You spend a lot of time with him? Um, from I work a lot, so I really don't get to be with him that much. But I get him like probably once or twice out of the week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's good. You know what I'm saying? He getting, he getting big. He's about to be one years old. It's coming up. Probably like two more weeks. Okay. So do you have like partial custody or is it just... No, nah, it's just, it's not even custody, it was just like me and my, me and his mother worked it out, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, for the co-parenting, you know what I'm saying? For those going through that situation, you know what I'm saying? Don't have faith, you know what I'm saying? Stay strong. Work things out. Kids what? are the future. They need both parents. Hmm. That's a good question. I guess maybe I, I do without really... Thinking about it, I guess. Uh, being from the Bronx is a lot of pressure. Um, for two reasons, I feel like. One, because this is where hip-hop started. So you got to represent, you know, from the from the motherland of hip-hop. And two, because I feel like the Bronx kind of got, like, snubbed a lot of times. Like, you know, we kind of, like, people lost faith in the Bronx. Or maybe they just wasn't giving no love to the Bronx, no shine to the Bronx. And there's a lot of really talented artists in the Bronx. And I feel like maybe now we... We kind of get in that that uh, reputation back again, but 